welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah, welcome to my kitchen. Well, next week is Thanksgiving. Are y'all ready for Thanksgiving? You got your groceries from the grocery store, your recipes all figured out, your kitchen ready for some major cooking. Well, I've been doing some pre-planning for Thanksgiving this year, and I'm actually not doing pumpkin pie this year because we grew so many of these Canada Crookneck squash this past summer. We actually ended up harvesting 80 of them. I have been working on a pumpkin substitute pumpkin pie recipe. It tastes amazing. Our family has officially decided that we never need to have pumpkin in the house again because this squash can be a true replacement. I'm so excited to share with you the recipe, but not only am I excited to share with you this squash pie recipe, I'm also excited to share with you the pie crust recipe that I'm using and my super secret special recipe for the most amazing homemade whipped cream. So basically three of my favorite things wrapped up into one video. I'm so excited to get started. Now the first thing that we need to do is get started cooking this squash. Again, this is a Canada Crookneck squash. Now can I just say, let's all be adults today in the comments below about the shape of this. We're all grown ups, we know, but we don't need to put it down in the comments. Let's just giggle about it for a second. And like, move on, okay? So we need to bake this in the oven. You guys, it's so easy and it's passive work. You just throw it in the oven, go about your business, and in an hour it's all baked for you. So let's get that started first. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna preheat the oven. 350 will work. I have a cookie sheet out here, a baking pan. We need to grease this. I'm gonna be using coconut oil because I think that works really well but you could really just use any oil that you think is good for what you're doing. Um, I love to get bulk things. If you guys watch us a lot, you know that I like to order in bulk so that I don't have to go to the grocery store. This is one of the things that I order in bulk, organic coconut oil from Azure Standard. There are a couple other things today that I'll be using from Azure Standard and I'll let you know as we get going. So I also like just to use a little glove Here's some coconut oil. I'm just gonna grease the pan like this. Everybody has their own secret way to grease a pan. This is just my current favorite. Now that the oven is preheating and the pan is greased, we need to cut this up a little bit. I end up cutting this in several pieces and cutting it in half lengthwise. You don't have to do that, it's just my preference. I cut the neck of the squash off and cut that into several pieces. Today I'm gonna to cut it into two, but you can cut it into several pieces. And then we're gonna cut these in half. Now sometimes these squash can be really hard to cut. And um, several years ago, Kevin taught me a trick. Um, if you have a squash, like a butternut squash, that is really super hard and it's hard to cut through, you can just throw it in the microwave for like 30 seconds to a minute and it will soften it just enough to be able to easily get through uh, the squash. Not too bad. So inside of here, just like a pumpkin, just like any other winter squash, it's filled with pulp and it's filled with, is that what that's called? I don't know what that's called. We call this the guts. <laughs> uh, there's seeds in here. There's like slimy stringy stuff. We need to scoop that out. Just take a big sturdy spoon like this and just start scooping this out. It's like when you carve a pumpkin. And sometimes inside of there, there's still some of that stringy stuff in there. And I prefer to scrape all of that out because I don't want stringy stuff in my pie. These are all cleaned out. They look great, ready to go on the baking pan. I do wanna tell you that several things you can do with this in here. Uh, you can pull out the seeds 
wash them off and save them for growing next year. You can also take out the seeds, wash them off, and roast them in the oven. That's what we're gonna do. Samantha actually loves to separate the seeds from the pulpy stuff and make uh, garlic roasted, well, squash seeds, not pumpkin seeds. So she said, please save this so that she can do that. Okay, set this aside. Now it's time to get this ready to go into the oven. When I roast squash, I put it cut side down. All of it cut side down as much as I can because I feel like it retains a lot of the moisture inside of there. It makes it nice and creamy. If it's face side up, I feel like it loses some of the moisture and dries out inside of there. So that's what I am doing today. All right, into the oven this goes for one hour. Okay, pie crust time. Is this the intimidating part for you guys? Because this was totally the intimidating part for me. Actually, the intimidating part was like rolling it out and I have a super fun trick that my dad taught me. Again, this is a recipe that my dad has been using for like 17 years. The recipe is from a family friend, so I'm gonna share it with you today. And I'm gonna share his special trick for rolling these pie crusts out. So let's get started. Super easy. This recipe has four ingredients. Mainly, it is flour. I'm using the organic all-purpose flour. It's also unbleached from Azure Standard. We're using lard. This is leaf lard that we rendered from our pigs. Also, there'll be a little bit of salt in there, and then we're gonna be using some ice water. Now, did I tell you we're making two pies? Making pies and making pie crust is kind of like when you make bread. If you're gonna go through all the work, you might as well just double the recipe and make two while you're at it. So we are making two pies, two pie crusts. We're gonna start off with three cups of flour. Three cups. To the flour, I'm just gonna add some salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt, which I also buy in bulk from Azure Standard. You don't have to worry about how much, it's just really considered a dash. And now we are going to measure out one cup of lard. Look at how gorgeous white that is. Okay, that's all measured out. Now, if you don't have home rendered lard at your house, it's fine. Some alternatives to this lard would be butter. We produce butter too on the homestead, butter and lard. So you could use butter instead. You could use the lard from the Crisco aisle. You could use Crisco or any other kind of vegetable shortening, as long as it's a solid type of fat, okay? So I'm gonna start kind of digging this out of here um, in small chunks. If you did this with butter, you would just wanna cut it into little cubes. It's just gonna make incorporating this fat into the flour a little bit easier than if it was just like one giant hunk, okay? Now I'm gonna start off this process using a pastry cutter. I'm not sure if you have ever seen one of these before, uh, but they are very handy. I used to have one way back in the day that was super cheap and I hated it and never used it because it was super flimsy and these, like, these things like bent, but I, I spent the money and got a really nice one last Christmas for myself with Christmas money on Amazon. This brand is Norpro. I got it from Amazon. I'll put a link to it um, in our Amazon shop if you wanna check it out. I love it. So like I said, I'm gonna start out combining the fat with the flour using a pastry cutter. So I'm just gonna use the pastry cutter to just combine the flour with the fat. I'm going over all of the blobs of fat and just cutting them up and that is mixing it into the flour. Do you see how all of a sudden now this is becoming kind of crumbly rather than just powdery. That's what you're looking for. Keep going. Now you can continue using this pastry cutter until it's all incorporated into the fat and it's not powdery at all. 
But what I like to do is to then switch and do this by hand. And this is what my dad taught me. When you're going through the flour and you see big hunks of fat like this, anything that's, you know, bigger than a pea size or so, put that in your hands and just kind of smush it. Okay. You're looking for big globs of fat that haven't been incorporated into the flour because you really want that fat distributed through the flour. Once it looks like coarse crumbs, then you're done. Okay, the next step of the pie crust making process is to start adding some ice water, some very, very cold water. We're going to add it a couple tablespoons at a time. You don't want sticky pie crust dough because it's hard to work with but it can't be so dry that it is crumbling, doesn't stick together. So you kind of have to be careful there. Also, you don't want to overwork the dough or it will get stiff and hard rather than light and fluffy like your grandma's pie crust. But you know what? We're not experts here. We're not professional bakers. So we're just going to do the best that we can and everybody will appreciate that you made it homemade. First, I'm going to start with, oh, two or three tablespoons of this ice water. Just pour it around like that. Make sure you don't get any ice cubes. So we're not doing too much at one time. And then I'm just gonna take a fork and kind of flip it around like this. Just gently stir it. And you can see that already bigger clumps are starting. Add a couple more. Still crumbly. Starting to form a ball now. I think one more tablespoon will do the trick. Okay, I think that is good. We're gonna put this, we're gonna make this into a disc. We're gonna wrap it in plastic wrap. We're gonna let it cool in the refrigerator for about an hour. Chilling this pie dough in the refrigerator for an hour is gonna make it a lot easier to roll out when we're ready. So in the refrigerator this goes, and then we can start getting the pulp out of the squash. Let that cool down so we can start making the pie filling. Well, the squash is done. See how? easily the knife just slips right in there they're totally done well these squash look fantastic now we just need to spoon out the pulp from all of these put them in a bowl they should come out really really easily I don't know if you can see this but oh that just comes out so easily because they're so nice and done There we go. The squash puree is all ready. I'm just gonna let this cool down a little bit more before we start adding the other ingredients. I don't wanna wait any longer, so I think we should just get started on these pie crusts. Hopefully it's not a big mess. Hasn't been quite an hour. We'll see how it goes. This is where I'm gonna show you a super secret tip and trick that my dad taught me. I have no idea if he just thought this up on his own or if he learned it from somebody else, uh, but it's super handy. First, we need to cut this baby in half because remember, we're doing pie, two pie crusts. Now that we cut this in half, we're just gonna make this into a round, flatten it back out, do the best you can. You need to channel the inner ceramic artist. Okay, let's get started. This here is the trick. This is wax paper and you, you put tape on the corners, tape it down with some scotch tape, and you roll out your pie dough on here with another piece 
of wax paper on top. So just roll it out. Start in the middle and roll out to the sides. You don't have to be perfect. It just needs to work out in the end. I'm not a master baker. I'm not a master pie crust maker. I will resort to pasting things together if I absolutely have to. And I don't think there's any shame in that. Let's check pie plate number one. That will be perfect. Okay, now don't go anywhere. You need to see this because this is what makes this so easy. This, this trick of my dad's. Carefully take off the top sheet. Just tear away the sides from your tape. Okay. Now just carefully remove the wax paper. Now this was probably a little bit too warm. I probably should have left it in the refrigerator, but I was anxious to do this for you guys. It's a little, it's a little soft, but it worked. Okay, so now you have it in there. Just press it down in there. Make sure it hits all the corners. And then however you like to decorate the sides of your pies, you just do that. Anything extra over here, I don't cut off. I fold it underneath like this because I really like a pie crust that has a thick edge around it. And see, I made a mistake here. That's not gonna be perfect right here. Big deal. It'll taste good. Okay, pie crust number one. Now I just need to do the second one the same way. The pie filling recipe is super simple. We're gonna start off with four eggs. Now I'm using actually three duck eggs and one large chicken egg from our farm, from our homestead. We love duck eggs, that's why we keep ducks. Uh, their eggs are, they're huge. They have giant yolks and they're fantastic for baking. I'm doing this first so that I can just um, mix these eggs up a little bit. Just. Next we'll add the squash pulp, four cups of squash pulp. A half a cup of milk, this is raw milk from our cow, Hope. One cup of sugar. I'm actually using um, organic evaporated cane juice, so it's a little bit light brown two teaspoons of vanilla, two tablespoons of flour, a teaspoon of salt, and a variety of spices are going in here. Uh, cinnamon, ginger, allspice, and nutmeg. And I'll make sure to put the quantities in the um, recipe. Okay, so we are gonna get this on the mixer, mix this all up, and then we'll be ready to put them in the pie shells and put them in the oven. I'm gonna preheat the oven. The filling is all mixed up. We just need to pour it equally between the two pie pans and get this in the oven. These pies are going to bake for a total of an hour on 375, but the first 20 minutes, I'm actually gonna have these pie crust shields over the pie crust. Now, if you don't have these, that's okay. Just put a little piece of foil around the edges of the pie crust so they don't burn. So the first 20 minutes, these will be on there and then we'll take them off for the remainder 40 minutes. Well, they're all finished and it's time to take them out. 
They look fabulous. Well, these guys need to cool for about two hours and then we'll put them in the refrigerator. We like our pies like this cold when we eat them. So I'm gonna let these cool overnight and then tomorrow we'll make the special whipped cream that I have to show you and we'll try a piece. Okay, let's finish this up already. I want to try a piece of this, but we need to make the whipped cream. And this is not just any old whipped cream. This is like super special whipped cream and it's gonna be amazing. The first thing we need to do is get my mixing bowl and the paddle out of the freezer. When you're making whipped cream, the colder the better with all of your ingredients and with your bowls and utensils and stuff. So let me get my bowl and my paddle. Okay, we're gonna start off in our frosty bowl. We're gonna put two cups of cream. Now I like the whipped cream to be a little bit sweet, but not too sweet. So I'm gonna put a little powdered sugar in this sieve so we can sift it down into the cream. I like to use um, powdered sugar because I think it dissolves better. I'm not measuring, but I'm gonna put two serving spoons full down in there. That's probably a third of a cup. Let's sift that down in there. Okay, that's good. I'm also gonna add something that's really gonna make this whipped cream special. I'm gonna add a little bit of cinnamon. Now I do order it in bulk too. I think I'm gonna add like half of a teaspoon. This is Ceylon cinnamon, just a different kind of cinnamon than normal that you'd get from the store. And I'm going to make this even more special by adding just a couple drops of brandy flavoring. Now, you could use just regular brandy um, or, or nothing at all. You could put uh, vanilla e extract in here, but I just think just a couple drops will really bring out some amazing flavor. And I think it will pair really well with our pie. Put our paddle on and we're just gonna let this go. Let me tell you, I snuck a taste. It's amazing. It's amazing. All right, let's bring that over. Look at how fantastic it looks. Yum! Okay, I probably could have continued whipping it so it was a little bit more stiff, but I'm always afraid that I'm gonna whip it too much and then it's gonna turn into butter and that wouldn't be good. Okay, let's get set up open one of these pies up. They've been in the refrigerator overnight getting nice and cold, which is exactly how our family likes it. Let's have some of this pie. I'm gonna plate this on. This is one of my, these are my grandma's plates. I get so many questions and so many compliments on my dish set. These were my grandma's. Uh, this was the set that she got for her wedding. They're from Vernon Kilns in California from the 40s. Give us some pie. Give us some of the wonderful cinnamon brandy whipped cream. And you know, I just need to put a blob of this in my coffee. Heck yeah has a picture of me and the girls when they're tiny. You know, nobody's here in the house with me to try some of the pie, but that actually means I could probably eat like half the pie and nobody would ever know until they came home, I guess. So let's give this a try. Squash pie with homemade whipped cream using a homemade lard crust. Mmm. It is so good and that homemade whipped cream just makes such a difference. This pie crust is really nice, light and fluffy. Awesome recipe from my dad. Can't get any better 
unless you have some coffee with homemade whipped cream. What an awesome thing to prepare for your family for the holidays, whether that's Thanksgiving or Christmas coming up. I encourage you to think outside of the box this holiday season for your pumpkin pie. Maybe switch out some of the squash that you grew in your garden. I bet any type of winter squash would be fantastic substituted for that pumpkin puree. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. And if you'll share this on all of your social media so we can get the word out that pumpkin pie doesn't always just have to be plain old pumpkin pie. Switch it up with some homegrown squash. Until next time, guys, thanks so much for stopping by our homestead. Happy Thanksgiving. Take care and God bless.